The following video contains spoilers for Lost Belt 5.2 Olympus. Beyond the earth, beyond the sky, beyond the stars, there is a place that promises nothing, and yet everything. A place that beckons the empty, one that will require bloodshed and wisdom to reach. Within the infinity that is contained here, the void will certainly triumph, but here, victory will also mean to seize being. Within his life, it was Miyamoto Musashi who had reached that point and went on to write about it. As a result, he wished for the world to become hell itself. Within her life, Miyamoto Musashi has yet to attain that brilliance. Only by living within hell herself will she find what she desires. Displaced from her world, she is an individual that is stranded amongst the endless possibilities. Her techniques were yet imperfect, but they were the only means of fighting that she retained. Her knowledge and wisdom were yet incomplete, but they were the only things that could guide her to attain her wish. As an incomplete warrior, she lacked far too many things to ever be truly satisfied. At the same time, this was the only path allowed to her. Without ever being able to know the idea of a true home, all she could do was enjoy the thrill of battle, arriving in a new world and leaving it about as quickly. Only the aftermath of her battles being a reminder that she had in fact existed here for a short moment. Sometimes with an easygoing smile, giving one the impression of a cheerful girl. Sometimes with a deranged expression, conveying the sheer joy she felt from participating in conflict. In truth, she called herself a manslayer, something closer to a beast than a proper human. Such is the nature of someone that can only truly thrive in battle. So her ability to take life swiftly shouldn't come as a surprise. But the truth is far from simple. While filled with pride, she is not someone to shy away from using every available means to survive, which to her would be the highest form of victory. Even though her life is hollow, she tries to enjoy every moment of it, so as to be human. While ruthless, she is not one to take away one's dignity or insult others. Though she should not care, she does, and considers those that trample on the weak for their own amusement true monsters deserving of death. In the end, she is still a cheerful young girl. Her emotions are transparent, there for everyone to see, when she laughs and when she feels sad. At the same time, a feral aspect of her yearns for her self-improvement, the hornment of her skills with the inhuman steel she uses as a weapon. Her pursuit of nothingness sheds these very emotions that she cherishes, all in pursuit of her true fulfilment. The zenith remains unreached, yet to be climbed. And so it has come to pass, the hell desired, the hell needed by Musashi. Its name was Shimosa, the manifestation of a suitable hell, founded on the revenge of a single man, and enabled by the malicious nature of a truly monstrous being. Within that hell, curses and hatred became the norm, sweeping the land and robbing it of mercy. All that remained was one singular truth. In order to protect anything, one needed strength, but those that wielded such strength only sought slaughter all but one single swordswoman. Confronted by those that had succumbed to their feral nature, it shaped the basis for her own paradise. Except, within that hell, the notion of innocence still existed. Those simply caught up in the world storm. This is where she had to confront her primal instincts, where she stood against those that trampled on the weaker ones for the sake of their amusements. Within this fictional world removed from proper history, even though there was no merit to be attached to any of it, no personal gain, so to speak, for standing up for its people, she still took a stance for those that couldn't fight back, to protect those that could not protect themselves. In her venture to do so, having to carry a larger burden than simply being able to enjoy the thrill of battle, she had managed to slowly climb to new heights, not despite of it, but because of it. At the end of this forsaken dream, perhaps as a reward bestowed by the heavens, 
she would face an opponent that would be her true equal. In a realm that eclipsed life itself, infinity and nothingness faced one another. The victory was not decided by skill, but by the declaration of a bystander, one for whom Musashi had fought for. With her humanity intact until the end, the swordswoman had indeed reached the zenith without reducing herself to a mere beast, a monster of blades. She faced her death while content, after saving the one who had accompanied her until the end. And yet, she persisted after death, summoned as a servant due to her bond with Chaldea's last master. A reward perhaps, for her actions? Or perhaps, as it soon turned out, a result of one last duty she would have to fulfil. Her own nature was that of a theoretical possibility that had long since been abandoned by the world. It could be said that her world was rendered to have never existed, pruned from the canon of mankind. She herself was the only proof that such a possibility had managed to once exist. So naturally, something that was born from rejected potential would resurface in history's losers, the Lost Belts, asked to fight one last time, facing worlds similar to her own, all a result of her heavenly eye. But her ability to witness the possibilities of mankind, to visit them, to witness them, it also meant to decrease them. Slowly, she became discarded by each of these worlds, leaving them behind. At the end, the ability that had saved her eventually forced her to end up in one single world. There existed no place to run to, no place to call home, a reject in every sense of the word, her accomplishments, her very person, unable to find a place to stay in any single possibility. Even if she was accepted by the people, the world had no place for her. At the end of her journey, she had to face that truth. Only a matter of time before she would disappear truthfully, stranded with nowhere to go. Even she could no longer claim to be carefree. As she tried to keep up her cheerful persona, she tried to leave behind nothing but good memories and impart confidence to Chaldea, all while steeling herself for the inevitable. Then once a gigantic eye peered down upon the entire world below, residing in a place beyond anyone's ability to be reached, let alone to be defeated. There, finally, the day had come to fell a god's malignant gaze. With no way to defeat him, there existed but only one option. To rob the undefeatable of its ability to see the world at the very least, severing it from the world of man. With her skills, she once again reached into the realm she had once reached before, and then reached further, and further. Beyond nothingness, no one knows what resides. The girl that had once challenged the world was no longer to be found anywhere. Just what place had she reached at the end? Just what sight had she experienced there in the sky? Just what had she remembered in her final moments? What lies beyond the limits of everything, no one knows. All that remained was but a single truth. Her sword had reached a place unknown to anyone else unconquered by anyone else, a vibrant heavenly flower, a sword reached the heights of nothingness. Thank you for watching this analysis video on Miyamoto Musashi, a huge thanks to Sparrow for providing me with the script again, and until the next manifestation, where hope and despair gather once more.